Hi, I'm Dr. Dave. Neuroendocrinology is the study of the interactions between the nervous system and the endocrine system. The concept arose from the recognition that the secretion of hormones from the pituitary gland is closely controlled by the brain, especially by the hypothalamus. Oxytocin and vasopressin slash antidiuretic hormone. The two peptide hormones of the posterior pituitary gland, the neurohypophysis, are secreted from the nerve endings of magnocellular neuroscretory neurons into the systemic circulation. The cell bodies of these oxytocin and vasopressin neurons are in the paraventricular nucleus and supraptic nucleus, respectively and the electrical activity of these neurons is regulated by efferent synaptic inputs from other brain regions. By contrast, the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland, the adenal hypophysis, are secreted from endocrine cells that, in mammals, are not directly innervated, yet the secretion of these hormones, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACDH, Glutenizing hormone, LH, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, prolactin and growth hormone, remains under the control of the brain. The brain controls the anterior pituitary gland by releasing factors and release inhibiting factors. These are blood-borne substances released by hypothalamic neurons into blood vessels at the base of the brain, at the median eminence. These vessels, the hypothalamohypophyseal portal vessels, carry the hypothalamic factors to the adenal hypophysis, where they bind to specific receptors on the surface of the hormone-producing cells. For example, the secretion of growth hormone is controlled by two neuroendocrine systems, the growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH, neurons and the somatostatin neurons, which stimulate and inhibit GH secretion, respectively. The GHRH neurons are located in the arcade nucleus of the hypothalamus. Whereas the somatostatin cells involved in growth hormone regulation are in the periventricular nucleus. These two neuronal systems project axons to the median eminence, where they release their peptides into portal blood vessels for transport to the anterior pituitary. Growth hormone is secreted in pulses, which arise from alternating episodes of GHRH release and somatostatin release which may reflect neuronal interactions between the GHRH and somatostatin cells, and negative feedback from growth hormone. These systems are of great interest to both physiologists and neuroscientists for a variety of reasons. Second, the neurons of the neuroendocrine system are large. They are many factories for producing secretory products. Their nerve terminal are large and organized in coherent terminal fields. Their output can often be measured easily in the blood. And what these neurons do and what stimuli they respond to are readily open to hypothesis and experiment. Hence, neuroendocrine neurons are good model systems for studying general questions, like how does a neuron regulate the synthesis, packaging, and secretion of its product? And how is information encoded in electrical activity? Today, neuroendocrinology embraces a wide range of topics that arose directly or indirectly from the core concept of neuroendocrine neurons. Neuroendocrine neurons control the gonads, whose steroids, in turn, influence the brain, as do corticosteroids secreted from the adrenal glands under the influence of ACDH. The study of these feedbacks became the province of neuroendocrinologists. The peptides secreted by hypothalamic neuroendocrine neurons into the blood proved to be released also into the brain, and the central actions often appeared to complement the peripheral actions. So understanding these central actions also became the province of neuroendocrinologists.
Sometimes even when these peptides crop up in quite different parts of the brain that appear to serve functions in related to endocrine regulation. Neuroendocrine neurons were discovered in the peripheral nervous system, regulating, for instance, digestion. The cells in the adrenal medulla that release adrenaline and noradrenal prove to have properties between endocrine cells and neurons and proved to be outstanding model systems for instance for the study of the molecular mechanisms of exocytosis, and these, too, have become, by extension, neuroendocrine systems. Neuroendocrine systems have been important to our understanding of many basic principles in neuroscience and physiology, for instance, our understanding of stimulus secretion coupling. The origins and significance of patterning in neuroendocrine secretion are still dominant themes in neuroendocrinology today. Neuroendocrinology is also used as an integral part of understanding and treating neurobiological brain disorders. One example is the augmentation of the treatment of mood symptoms with thyroid hormone. Another is the finding of the transheritin, thyroxine transport. Problem in the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, of some patients diagnosed with schizophrenia. Neuroendocrine cells are cells that release a hormone into the circulating blood in response to a neural stimulus. These hormones may be amines, neuropeptides, or specialized amino acids. They package the hormones in vesicles and send these packages via lung processes, axons two blood vessels. When stimulated, by hormones from the bloodstream or neurons, the neuroendocrine cells secrete the hormones into the bloodstream. The hormones then travel to their target cells and may stimulate, inhibit or maintain function of these cells. The target cells may feed back information to these neurons that regulates further secretion. Specialized groups of neuroendocrine cells can be found at the base of the third ventricle in the brain, in a region called the hypothalamus. This area controls most anterior pituitary cells and thereby regulates functions in the entire body, like responses to stress, cold, sleep, and the reproductive system. The neurons send processes to a region connecting to the pituitary stalk in the hormones called releasing or inhibiting hormones, are released into the bloodstream. They are carried by portal vessels to the pituitary cells where they may stimulate, inhibit, or maintain the function of a particular cell type. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.